Leveling up. Extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up. Hello and welcome to the Leveling Up podcast with me, George Swift. The Leveling Up podcast is here to give you the personal development, the entrepreneurial development and the business growth that you, the ambitious business owner, desires. I'm here to give you the inspiration, the motivation, but above all else, as always, to challenge your aspirations to take you and your business to the next level. Don't forget, subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. And in today's episode, we are talking about education versus manipulation. This is a topic I've been talking about for, I mean, well over 10 years, but certainly in my own business, Bigger, Brighter, Bolder, for the duration of 10 years, which is understanding the nature of how we're manipulated by our unconscious mind, how other people, other agendas, other organizations outside of ourselves also can hijack that manipulation process and therefore they can bend us to their will. And for me, a big part of being an entrepreneur, of course, is about free will. It's about being your own person, living your life on your terms, creating a business on your terms and going out there and just living life how you choose to live. I genuinely believe that there is no other freedom like it than being an entrepreneur. We get to do what we want, the way we want, when we want, for who we want, with who we want, ultimately for the wealth that we want. And in order to really be able to take control of that freedom for ourselves and embrace the true opportunity that's available to us as individuals, as humans, and as human beings in business, entrepreneurs, we need to be setting ourselves free from manipulation, our own manipulation, the manipulation of feeling like you're not good enough, the manipulation of your life lessons from growing up, maybe through teachers that said you wouldn't amount to anything. Maybe it's your parents and their view on money that's holding you back now from being successful or whether it is from other people's agendas. I've talked a lot recently about big brand marketing and how you know their entire game plan is to manipulate you into buying products that fundamentally you don't need and don't want. Now, don't be wrong, not all products, not all brands, of course. I'm talking about the obvious stuff. You know, buying food products that are bad for us, they can't educate us into buying that product. They manipulate us into buying that product through either trying to tap into our innermost desires, you know, the desire to be young, energetic, connected. If you think about a lot of fast food ads, if you look at a lot of junk food ads, it's all about that family coming together. It's friends coming together. It's young, vibrant. They're always healthy and slim, by the way, as well, and good looking people that come together, you know, to have these amazing experiences around fundamentally consuming products that are toxic, poisonous, and if you consume them for your lifetime, ultimately could kill you. Let's be honest, probably will kill you. So they're not going to educate you into buying a bag of crisps or a bag, of, you know, a can of pop. They're not going to educate you into having fast food, junk food. They have to manipulate you into that. And I've talked a lot about that because it's really relevant because when we can see the manipulation at that kind of level, we start to tune into that manipulation. We tune in for that manipulation in politics, for example. And in previous episodes, I've talked about big brand politics. So, you know, big brand marketing moved from big brand marketing and started to work within politics and campaigns because what they realized is it's not about educating people anymore. It's all about manipulating people. It's not about educating people on policy or impacts or events. It's about manipulating people to do what you want them to do. And that's why politics, you know, back in the 80s, started to hire some of the biggest of the big brand marketers to help them with their campaigns, their slogans, their messaging, their positioning. It wasn't about educating us. It was about selling to us, manipulating us to buy their product, to follow their path. And that is what politics is today as well. It's not about education. It's all about manipulation. You've only got to open your eyes and see what's going on in the world around you to see this to be true. The same with big brand marketing. And, you know, the same is also true with society as a whole. Society as a whole will influence and manipulate you, whether it's through judgment, guilt, whether it's through humiliating you, whether it's yourself being manipulated. You know, you're manipulating yourself because you don't want to be seen to be a failure. You don't want to be seen to do something that's wrong. You know, you don't want to be seen to be a bad person. All of that manipulation. So there's manipulation that we do to ourselves. We're manipulated by ourselves. We're manipulated by our past experiences that 
train us and condition us into certain ways of being that fundamentally, as I talked in a lot of episodes last week about, fundamentally detract us from achieving what we could achieve, but also move us away from being the person that we truly want to be, the person that we can wake up and love and respect. And what happens is we go down this route then of potentially damaging our own self-esteem, our own self-confidence. And as you can imagine, as a business owner, there's an immediate knock-on effect to your performance in your business. I've done episodes on that as well. So we're manipulated by ourselves. we're manipulated by our past, we're manipulated by society, we're manipulated by marketing, TV, media, online media, offline media. We're manipulated through the magazines we read, the books we read, the heroes that we follow and worship. We're manipulated by films, we're manipulated by the news, we're manipulated by politics, because fundamentally we've evolved as a species to be manipulatable. It's that tribal survival that we had to evolve to care what people think. We, we, we needed to be manipulated by other people's opinions on us, because the idea was it was the glue that held the tribe together. I needed to be a good member of my tribe. I needed to be a good member of my small society because if I wasn't contributing to society, I was just taking from society and that wouldn't have done. If we go back you know, millions of years to early civilizations and let's go all the way back to when we were dwelling in caves, you know, we had to work together and we needed a uh, not rules. We didn't have regulations. We didn't have policing. We didn't have government back then. What we had was we had these inner emotional responses, you know, this feeling of letting someone else down, this feeling of wanting to be accepted. Because if I'm being accepted in the tribe, the tribe will look after me. I'm safe. So all these manipulations that we have today are actually just tapping into our own manipulatableness, if that's a word, from our prehistoric background. For example, you know, we are predisposed to desire sweet things. If we were out in the wild and we were lucky enough to come across a bush full of berries, we were meant to consume as much as humanly possible. We were meant to be greedy in that moment. So the way our bodies respond, for example, when we start to put sugar in from fruit back in those days, what would happen is it would have this impact on our body where it would turn off things like hunger so that we could consume things. It would also turn on, you know, a whole lot of chemistry that would make us turn into greedy monsters and want to consume everything. Well, now we can see that in sugary foods and fast food and any food today where they pump it full of sugar, you know, it has the same impact, which is it's it's tuning into that already evolved nature in us to consume as much sugar as possible because back in the day it was so rare to come by and that sugar was very quickly turned into glycogen and it was turned into fuel for the muscles and fuel for the body it was such a rich supply of nutrients sugar was so good for us and it was so rare to come by we were meant to consume as much as possible when we came across it not pick a few berries and wander off and not see sugar again or you know in the form of fruit for maybe another week three weeks whatever so we were meant to consume every berry we could on there. So now, of course, fast food companies and junk food companies, they put that sugar in it. What it does, we have the same impact. We can't turn off. We can't turn off. Nobody overeats salad. Nobody overeats apples. Nobody overeats vegetables. But, you know, a bag of sweets, you know, will consume the whole fucking thing. A bag of crisps will consume the whole fucking thing. You know, fast food, junk food. You can consume, you know, 1,200, 1,500 calories in a sitting of a meal, be hungry two hours later. You physically could not consume 1,500 calories worth of healthy foods in one sitting. It would be impossible. So, again, it's about being hijacked. It's hijacking our own origins as a species, This nature of us not wanting to be judged, this nature of us wanting to fit in, this nature that we have to want to be liked because in our past that meant that we were safe and now that is also being used against us. So I've talked a lot about this over the past month in my episodes. It's a it's a core philosophy of mine. It's something that I teach all the time, which is to get people to understand how you are being manipulated by yourself. And we need to get through that manipulation, break through that manipulation to set ourselves free. But it's also understanding that there are other agendas out there that have their own outcomes that they are manipulating you for, which don't have your best interests at heart and which you're playing a part in their agenda, and in doing so, potentially even contravening your own agendas, your own values, your own belief systems, your own wants and desires of what it is that you're trying to create. And for me, to be 
free is to is to free yourself from all of these manipulations. One of the things I want to talk to you today about is this concept of education versus manipulation. I talked about how in marketing back in the 1940s and 50s and before that, marketing was really about education. It's like, here's a product. It will do this for you. It will do that for you. And they realized that actually if they stopped selling products by saying, here's a product, let me educate you on the product, and actually went for, here's the product, here's how it will make you feel. Here's a product, and by consuming this product, it will fulfill this aspiration to feel this way, to be this way, to be seen as this way. And they started to hijack that evolved nature within all of us which is the one that enables us to be manipulated by what others think about us, to be manipulated by society as a whole, to be manipulated by my need for acceptance, my need to be seen as important, my need to feel good about myself, my need to be seen to be worthy of value, etc., etc. And they tap into this, and by tapping into this, they hijack us onto their agenda. Now, I've refrained over this whole period for really directly relating this kind of content specifically to events that are unfolding in the world today. I've held back for obvious reasons because I'm aware that right now in the world, people have very different opinions about what's going on. They have very different opinions about the nature of what's happening. We've got people who are blindly following instruction in the world. We've got people who are blindly protesting that. We've also got some very educated people that are coming up on all sides about what's actually happening in the world right now in terms of the economy, in terms of coronavirus, in terms of lockdown, etc. But what I want you to see for this moment is not about whether you believe the instruction to be right and the action that has been taken over coronavirus is right or whether you think it's wrong, whether you think these governments and powers have our best interests at heart or whether you think there is something darker going on and it doesn't have our best interests at heart, it doesn't actually matter right now, okay? So please keep your mind open regardless of what your current views are around the action that governments are taking around the world in reaction to coronavirus. What I want to share with you here, however, is my personal take on the cynicalness of how we are being manipulated to this. So regardless of whether you believe it's right that we should be locked down or whether you think it's wrong to be locked down, regardless of whether you think it's okay that the economy has paid the price that it has and will continue to pay the price based on the treatment plan for coronavirus or whether you think it's a price too big to pay. Regardless of all these things, keep an open mind and just see how we're being manipulated. We're not being educated. We're being manipulated. We're being manipulated into taking certain actions. Societies around the world are being re-engineered in terms of how they think. And what they're doing is they're tapping into all of these things I'm talking about now, these manipulations that exist within us. They're tapping into that in order to herd us into certain behavior patterns, into taking certain actions, into having certain thought patterns, into feeling certain ways that serve what it is that they are trying to achieve. Regardless of whether you believe, by the way, that it's the right thing or the wrong thing, what we are being led into What I personally believe we cannot accept is that we're being manipulated down that route and not educated down that route. If you can educate people, people will do the right thing. I think it's incredibly cynical to believe that if you educate people and give people the information, they'll still make the wrong choices. I actually firmly believe that if we took the time, if politicians took the time to truly educate people, educate the masses, then people will make the right choices. They will make the right decisions. And sometimes those decisions might not be the same as each other, but they'll be making the right ones for themselves. However, when you have an agenda that you are manipulating people into following, For me, even if that agenda may or may not be the right one or the good one, and it may or may not be the one that's right for me, 
But even if it is all super positive, I don't think it's acceptable that I'm being manipulated down that route as opposed to being educated to take myself down that route. And that's what this episode is really about. When I start to hone it in and I start to tread very carefully around the topic of the handling of coronavirus, what I want to talk about, I'm going to come down on one line here really strongly, and that is I believe it is completely unacceptable that mass populations have been manipulated into actions rather than educated into actions. If you educate people, they will make the choice for themselves. And if it's the right thing, to do a certain thing, take a certain action, follow a certain path, they will take it if they are educated properly. Why do you need to manipulate people? It's because you don't trust people to take the decision that you want them to have. Why is it that fast food, why is it that fizzy drink companies, why is it that the products that we don't need in this world, why are we manipulated into buying them? Because if we were educated on the product, we wouldn't buy them. Why do politicians manipulate us? It's because if we were educated, there's a risk that we wouldn't follow the path. We wouldn't do what they wanted us to do. That's the bit that's cynical. So regardless on whether you think the handling of coronavirus has been right or wrong, I personally believe we cannot tolerate living in a world where we are manipulated down that path, not educated down that path. Where instead of being trusted to make the right decisions, we are being manipulated into following a chosen path on our behalf. And I come back to the fact, why do you need to manipulate people? It's typically because if you educate people, they wouldn't do it. So I want to share with you something that's come to light just really recently for me. And again, it is controversial, but this is a clinical trial um, layout of what they're doing to get people vaccinated. Okay, now, I believe really strongly that if there is a need for the coronavirus vaccine, you can educate people into doing the right thing. I believe if you're manipulating people into a vaccine, it's because you don't trust people to make the right decisions. And if you don't trust people to make the right decisions, and I believe you can trust people to make the right decisions, then you have to start questioning whether or not this is the right thing for us. And I want you to bear with me. Please don't hit the stop button right now on this episode. Don't unfollow me on this podcast. I just want you to keep your mind open for a moment. And I want you to ask yourself, even if you believe it's the right thing, that everybody should be vaccinated against coronavirus when a vaccine is found. Do you truly believe that you want to live in a world where we're manipulated into that vaccine versus being educated in making that decision for ourselves? If you inherently don't trust society or human beings to make the right decisions, even when they're given all of the facts and the education, then I want you to look inside yourself and look at the cynicism inside yourself And do you really want to live in a world where people have to be manipulated to do things, even if it's the right thing? Do you really believe that that's a world that you want to live in? Is that a society that we want to exist in? For me, it's unacceptable. And I'm not shying away from saying that in this episode. So I want to share with you a couple of things, right, in terms of what they're doing with these trials. And the trials are designed to calculate how to get the best uptake of people going for the vaccine when one is found. So there are a number of different treatments that they are experimenting with right now, okay? One of them is uh, the control message, right? So this is the message that they put out there, and this is the one they're going to test whether other ways of messaging are better or worse than that message are getting the result they want, which is they want a mass uptake on the vaccine. So we've got this one, okay? So here's some things we're talking about here. Personal freedom message, economic freedom message, self-interest message, community interest message, economic benefit message, guilt message, embarrassment message, anger message, trust in science message, not bravery message. So in other words, they're trying to work out what's going to get us, what's going to manipulate us into taking the action they want us to take. And again, regardless of whether you think it's the right thing or the wrong thing, do you think it's acceptable that instead of being educated into taking the decision for ourselves, we're being manipulated en masse in order to make that decision. Or, let's be honest, not make that decision to have us hijacked emotionally so that we follow a chosen path based on somebody else's agenda. For me, I keep saying it, I think it's unacceptable. So the personal freedom message is one where 
They're talking about how COVID-19 is limiting people's personal freedoms. And by working together to get enough people vaccinated, society can preserve its personal freedom. The economic freedom message is one where they are talking about how COVID-19 is limiting people's economic freedom. And by working together to get enough people vaccinated, society can preserve its economic freedom. The self-interest message is all about how COVID-19 presents a real danger to one's health, even if one is young and healthy. Getting vaccinated against COVID-19 is the best way to prevent oneself from getting sick. The community interest message is all about how COVID-19 is a danger to people's loved ones. The more people who get vaccinated against COVID-19, the lower the risk that one's loved ones will get sick. Society must work together and all get vaccinated. The economic benefit message is about how COVID-19 is uh, wreaking havoc on the economy and the only way to strengthen the economy is to work together to get enough people vaccinated. The guilt message, wow, they are testing this, guys. The guilt message. This message is all about the danger of COVID-19 presents to the health of one's family and community. The best way to protect them is by getting vaccinated and society must work together to get enough people vaccinated. Society must work together. Okay. In other words, must manipulate each other, urge each other, coerce each other um, to get enough people vaccinated. Then it asks the participants to imagine the guilt they will feel if they don't get vaccinated and spread the disease. We're getting darker now, right? We're getting into the darker ones. The embarrassment message. The message about the danger of COVID-19 presents to the health of one's family and community. The best way to protect them is by getting vaccinated and by working together to make sure that enough people get vaccinated. Then it asks the participants to imagine the embarrassment they will feel if they don't get vaccinated and they spread the disease. The anger message. Good one here, this one. The message is about the danger of COVID-19 presents to the health of one's family and community. The best way to protect them is by getting vaccinated and by working together to make sure that enough people get vaccinated. Then it asks the participants to imagine the anger they will feel if they don't get vaccinated and spread the disease. The trust in science message is all about how getting vaccinated against COVID-19 is the most effective way of protecting one's community. Vaccination is backed by science. If one doesn't get vaccinated, that means that one doesn't understand how infections are spread or who ignores the science. In other words, you're a fucking idiot, right? That's the idiot one. Trusting science. If you don't listen to the science, if you don't get vaccinated, you are an idiot. The not bravery message, okay? This uh, sample will be assigned to the message which describes how firefighters, doctors and frontline medical workers are brave. Those who choose not to get vaccinated against COVID-19 are not brave. You're weak. You're a coward. Now, here's the thing. Regardless of where you are at right now, whether you believe that a vaccine is the solution to this or not, regardless of whether you believe we should have mass vaccination across the globe, regardless of your opinion, whether you think that the vaccination is cynical, sinister, has dark undertones, regardless of where you are right now, I want you to just think about the world you're living in. The one that has nothing to do with educating you, and it's all about manipulating you manipulating you through our evolved emotional manipulations. In other words, the systems and processes that already manipulate us, that we've evolved through from our early tribes all the way through to modern civilization, our embarrassment, our guilt, our anger, our resentments, all these things, these emotions, right? They're very powerful emotions for taking action. That's what they evolved for. And they are hijacking them to get a result. They have an agenda. The agenda is they want mass vaccination. Regardless of whether that's right or wrong, regardless of whether it's the best or the worst solution to this, can it truly be acceptable that we are going to be manipulated into that through guilt, embarrassment, through being ridiculed as some kind of fucking idiot because you don't get vaccinated? They're going to play on your fears for your loved ones. They're going to manipulate you as a, a member of society. And here's the thing. There's nothing new here, because if you've been watching this thing unfold, it's exactly how they've got us to where we are right now. And again, regardless of whether you think it's right or wrong, regardless of whether you think it's the right strategy or the wrong strategy, can it be right that we've been manipulated into this position rather than educated to this position? Rather than educating people to stay at home, they scared people to stay at home. And when the fear didn't work anymore, They got society to point fingers at each other. 
And over the mask wearing right now in the UK, and I'm sure it's exactly the same across the whole of the world right now, you know, a big part of the policing of the masking, and they didn't hide this, by the way, was about getting society to police itself in wearing the masking. Not through education, but through manipulation, where people go out and they may have educated themselves and they believe it's not the right thing to do. They are guilted, humiliated, embarrassed, scared into following the right path. The vaccine will be exactly the same. They're testing it right now. How do we get massive uptake on people doing the vaccine? Do we educate people or do we shortcut that whole process and say, fuck it, let's do what we've been doing all year this year. Let's do what we've been doing for the last fucking three, four decades. And let's manipulate the fuck out of society to do what we want them to do. Regardless of whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing for me, it cannot be acceptable that we allow people to manipulate us, to hijack us into taking certain action, regardless of the outcome. I want to live in a world where I'm educated. I'm given the facts. I want to be in a world where I am educated to the point where I can make a genuine decision. I want to live in a world where I can have a discussion on social media that isn't one where I'm getting slammed from one side or the other side, where you're getting you know, humiliated or judged or you're getting rejected by one side or the other side because you have a different opinion to other people. I want to live in a world where together we work out what the best route forward is. I want to live in a world where I can sit down with my fellow man and have an open, honest discussion where we can disagree, but from that disagreement, we can maybe come up with the right solution for both of us. I want to live in a world where when someone poses an alternative perspective on social media, it's not being censored. It's not being taken down. I want to live in a world where people can express themselves, a world where doctors who have different opinions can come out without fear to their reputation, their jobs, without fear of being censored, can come out and say, this is my finding. This is what I'm seeing in the world. Rather than being dictated to by a single mandate and then manipulated by that single mandate to take a certain course of action. I think it's cynical, regardless of whether you think the action is right or wrong. If you disagree with me, that's absolutely acceptable. If you agree with me, that's also acceptable. The bottom line is really simple. I want to wake people up. I want to wake business owners up. I want to wake people up to seeing the manipulations, the manipulations in themselves and also the manipulations of their past. But right now, currently in this world, it's never been more important, in my opinion, to see the manipulation, which is hijacking those systems and processes that already manipulate us to their agenda, which may or may not align with our own personal agendas. Our personal agendas of having successful businesses, successful lives, being happy, fulfilled, being free human beings, having the experience of life that we want to have and creating the society and the community around us that we want to create. Just earlier today, I was having a session with our mastermind members. These are all business owners doing well over 100K. Some of them doing multiple millions. And we're all talking about this new normal, this this term, the new normal. And are we going to go back to what we had before? Can we go back to what we had before? And, you know, we've been told almost, you know, two weeks into this bloody thing, you know, this is a new normal. This is life. We're going to have to live with this forever. You know, we're never going to travel like we used to travel. We're never going to meet like we used to meet. We're never going to watch sport like we used to watch sport. You know, we've been pushed down this this vision for the future. And I said to every single one of those business owners, I said, you know what? In the UK right now, one in 10 people working is a business owner, right? It's one in 10 people. So we're being dictated to and mandated to by politics and by government. We're being mandated to in terms of what that new normal looks like. We're being pushed into a version of the world that isn't, of our choosing, of our design, of our creation. And I said, you know, one in 10 people in this country right now is an entrepreneur. And I'm sure it's very similar around the world. And you're like, you know, whilst we've been dominated and dictated to by, you know, big organizations and big companies and by politics and media, actually, you know, we form the fabric of society. And rather than us, you know, following into this version of the new normal that's been dictated to us, I think we can start to create that new normal. I don't think going back's possible. I'm not even sure we want to necessarily go back. I believe there's something far, far better ahead of us. I think we can create something that works much better for all of us than even what we had just six months ago or so. I genuinely believe we can do that. But I also believe that if we are following a mandated approach to create a new normal that's not on our agenda, 
it's very possible that that new normal is not going to be aligned with your own agenda, my agenda of the life that I want to create, the society I want to create and live in, what I want to do for my kids, what I want to create for my kids, and fundamentally what I want my legacy to be. And individually, there's very little we can do. We follow this path to the new normal based on other people's agendas. I genuinely believe that we individually can create our businesses, our micro climates, if you like, of the new normal that we want to live in, what we want to create. And together, when we create all of those businesses and we create all of those normals in our own vision of what we want to live in and what we want society to look into, and not one that's been manipulated through guilt and fear and everything else, I believe that when one tenth of the working population come together in their small little micro climates, we start to create a web, a tapestry of the new normal. And that new normal is going to look much better, 10 times better than the one that I genuinely believe is being created for us. So this is my call to action to all entrepreneurs and business owners. You have more power than you think. Collectively, we are the fabric of society. One in 10 of us working right now are in business. We have the opportunity right now for us to not rebel. We don't have to go and protest. We don't have to do anything. You might be all in favor of the direction that we're currently being taken into. But I want us to think about what it is I want to create. What's the environment I want to create for me, my family, my loved ones, my society, my clients, my small part of the world? What do I want that to look like? Is that in alignment with what's been mandated and dictated? Or is my version a better version? Is my vision for my small piece of this world, is that better for me than what's been mandated to me? And I think if every single one of us do that, we can have a massive, massive cosmic shift in terms of where we're heading as a society. I believe we can create something ourselves. We have the power to create something. And I do trust in people. I trust in humanity. And I trust in us business owners and entrepreneurs to create a version of the world, a version of the new normal, a vision for the future that is far, far better than any that's going to be dictated and mandated to us by people who fundamentally are not interested in educating us, but are only interested in manipulating us. And for me, whether you align with that or you don't align with that, I believe that cannot be acceptable. And therefore, we need to start to create the future, the new normal that we want to exist in. Listen, guys, I really appreciate you for taking the time to listen to this episode. And you know what? Especially if you disagree with me. If you're still listening to this and you disagree with me, if you're still listening to this and you haven't liked what I've said, if you're still listening to me and I oppose some of what you might feel deep, deep, deep inside you, but you're still listening to this, I truly respect you and appreciate you for hearing me out, for being part of this conversation. And uh, I too will also listen to you as well. And I think that's how we come together as a society rather than being separated, which is increasingly seeming the agenda right now. So I thank you for being here, especially if you don't like what I said. I respect you 10 times more for that. And I want you to continue to create your business and yourself in your own image, how you want the world to be for you. I trust you and I trust all of mankind fundamentally to create the world that I want to live in, that you want to live in, that together we will have a more thriving society for all of us. I will see you next time. Until then, as always, be successful. Leveling up. Extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up. 